Here is a bookkeeping system for the executive who wants a graphic picture of business operations on his wall. Handsome and practical, these ProdTrol wall charts keep the executive up to the minute on how each salesman is doing or on the status of every operation in production control. If you need another file at this desk, throw a switch and another one comes up from somewhere on the inside of the desk. The Filomatic desk saves you the trouble of going to the files or opening drawers. The business papers going into this machine travel past a camera and are photographed on microfilm. These papers may now be destroyed and the files used for current papers. This dye-bold microfilm equipment provides an automatic developing machine for developing the microfilm. An entire filing case of business papers can be photographed on one small roll of microfilm. Microfilm in this viewing machine is projected as a large readable picture even though the original pictures are very tiny. Near the witness stand of every American court will be seen the shorthand court reporter. An increasing number of court reporters are using machine shorthand because of its greater speed and accuracy. This is the keyboard of modern shorthand machines. The operator strikes a word at a stroke as if playing a chord on the piano. The machine uses ordinary letters. This tape says, we had a red car that would start or stop. At the scene of an accident, one will frequently see a court reporter taking testimony. With the aid of an attachment, the court reporter can wear the machine around his neck and write as he walks. In this way, he can take testimony from injured people in hospitals without being in the way of doctors or nurses. Machine shorthand is fast, accurate, and easy on the operator. Dictating machines have gone electronic. The speaking tube is passe. Dictating machines now use microphones. This court reporter is reading machine shorthand notes into an electronic dictating machine in order to facilitate transcription. The microphone on the desk carries his voice to the machine where it is recorded on the wax cylinder. Modern electronic recorders may also be connected easily to the telephone so that a permanent record may be made of telephone conversations. A newcomer to the business world is the Pierce Electronic Wire Recorder, designed to be used as a dictating machine. The dictator speaks into a microphone, and his voice is magnetically recorded on a stainless steel wire. The length of the wire is such that more than two hours of dictation can be recorded on a single spool. These spools of wire are later transcribed by typists who listen through earphones connected with identical machines. A turn of a switch will also give the dictator immediate playback. Corrections or changes in dictation are easily made by erasing and re-recording. Another new dictating machine is the Soundscriber. This machine records dictation on a flexible plastic disc thin enough to be filed in ordinary file folders. The dictator uses a microphone and can play back immediately. Notations can be made telling the stenographer where to look for corrections and how long each letter or report is. When dictation is through, the dictator removes the record from the machine, writes his name and the date on it, puts the record in an envelope, and puts the envelope into an ordinary file folder. Later, the record goes on a transcription machine. The stenographer listens through a small loudspeaker placed near her ear so only she can hear. With her toe, 
She starts the machine, stops it, or backs it up to listen to a sentence for a second time. In this way, she listens and types, listens to another sentence, and types again. This typewriter has on it an attachment for cutting a small mimeograph stencil. These tiny stencils are used in the Elliott addressing machine. No special skill is required to cut these stencils. Anyone who can operate a typewriter can do it. When the stencils have been finished, they may be used at once to address cards, letters, or mail of any kind. The mail is inserted into the machine and into another chute of the machine goes a stack of the small mimeograph stencils. A turn of the switch and the rest is automatic. The name and address on each stencil is printed on a piece of mail. The stencil is cleaned and returned to its stack, ready for use at a future time. These same stencils can be used in still another machine for writing checks or listing the names of employees on payrolls. The finished payroll is more accurate and has been done more quickly than original typing. This graphotype machine is an important part of the more widely known addressograph. The graphotype embosses names and addresses on metal stencils. When one of these metal stencils has been firmly clamped in the graphotype, the operator types name and address on a standard typewriter keyboard. As she strikes each letter, the graphotype punches the letter into the metal stencil. These stencils, made of metal, will last a very long time without wear. This spinning die contains each of the keyboard characters. When the typist strikes a letter, the die stops for a fraction of a second, punches the proper letter in the metal stencil, and continues to spin. The finished metal stencil has name, address, and code number embossed permanently in the metal. The stencil is now inserted in a frame. The stencil, in its frame, is now ready to be used in any addressograph machine. A large number of these frames can be inserted in the addressograph at the same time. From this point on, the addressing of mail is an automatic process. The addressograph does the tedious job of typing names and addresses accurately and cheerfully, as well as at low cost. Many business offices requiring large quantities of form letters or advertising now use the lithographic method of printing. These simplified offset or lithographic presses can turn out complex office forms at the rate of 5,000 copies per hour. This Davidson duplicator will print from typing, drawings, or photographs. The office form now being printed is coming from a rubber relief cut. Here is a photograph being printed from a metal offset plate. These machines are entirely automatic and do a job which can scarcely be distinguished from the finest printing, even though the work is done in an average office by average office workers. Even the job of folding letters has been reduced to a mechanical process. This Davidson folder will fold business letters or forms in any desired fold ready to be mailed or stuffed into an envelope. Now here is a typewriter with a long carriage. It is the engineering model of the Varatyper. It will type on an engineering drawing 10 feet wide. And more than that, it will type in almost any size or style of type desired. Such a machine can be used to type names of cities or rivers on large maps. This standard model Varatyper 
is widely used for cutting mimeograph stencils or for typing original documents which are to be printed by the lithographic process. The amazing feature of this machine is the fact that its type can be easily removed by the operator and replaced by another set of type of a different size and style. Watch this operator change her type. There are more than 600 styles of type from which the operator may choose. And she can change her type even in the middle of a sentence. At the top of this page, note the wide variety in style and size of type. In the center, note that the right margin is even. At the bottom, note the foreign languages. The Varatyper is perhaps the most flexible typewriter on the market. This typewriter is another highly specialized machine. It is called the Autotypist Perforator. It does not type letters. Instead, it punches holes in a paper roll that looks like a player piano roll. Each letter on the keyboard punches a hole in a different position. When finished, these rolls are threaded into the Autotypist machine which is attached to these three typewriters. The typist types in name and address, presses a button, and the machine types an original letter. In this way, form letters can be typed automatically. And the finished product looks exactly like a personal, individually typed letter. Because the autotypist does 90% of the typing by itself, one typist can operate three or even four such typewriters at the same time. And an automatic typist never makes a mistake. And this is a typewriter too, a Chinese typewriter. One reason why the Chinese have never had a typewriter before this is the fact that the Chinese language has 5,400 letters in the alphabet, each letter standing for a different word or idea. That would mean that a Chinese typewriter would have to have 5,400 letters on it. And this machine, manufactured by the International Business Machines Corporation, has just that. 5,400 keys, however, would be too many. So the inventors just put number keys on the keyboard and numbered each letter in the Chinese alphabet. So, if you want to type word number 4,862, you would press 4862, and the machine would type the right character. All you have to do is learn which numbers mean which words. This sample of Chinese typing says, Charming, friendly, vivacious, and what's more, a world champion. This is Stella Pajunas, who has the fastest typing fingers in the world. For a solid hour, Miss Pajunas, in an international contest, typed at the rate of 140 words a minute. For her speed typing, Miss Pajunas uses a standard IBM electric typewriter. You will note that the machine has no carriage return lever. A key on the keyboard returns the carriage electrically. Notice also how her fingers hover slightly above the keyboard and how faintly and sharply her fingers strike the keys. While Miss Pajunas types, she is completely relaxed and appears to be under no strain in spite of the high speed at which she types. Her typing speed in this picture 
is over 140 words per minute. For the beginning typist, Miss Pajunas has several suggestions. Learn to relax when you type. Keep an erect, comfortable position and learn to type with a quick, sharp, sure stroke. Continuity, too, is important. While the fast typist is able to type some words faster than others, she loses no time through irregular typing. To demonstrate the lightness and sureness of her lightning stroke, Miss Pajunas covers her keyboard with a handkerchief. Note that the handkerchief is hardly ruffled. Samples of her typing are even, well arranged, and without error. As an amateur just out of school, Miss Pajunas won not only the novice and amateur world championship titles, but the world's professional titles as well. <laughs>